Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Citizen's Corner, where we address some of your questions and talk about things that are Star Citizen and not Star Citizen related. As you probably noticed, this week I am not showing Star Citizen footage. I'm showing the Elder Scrolls new expansion, Morrowind, because uh, as much as I like to show Star Citizen footage right now, showing you another asteroid field doesn't seem as interesting as showing you some of the new fun toys I have to play with. So... Of course, I am Jars, and with me is my Bastion of Common Sense Lightning Dragon, who is currently feeling a little under the weather, so bear with him. And uh, we have several questions we want to go over, and just something we want to uh, discuss related to uh, something Lightning want to talk about real quick. And uh, other than that, let's get to it. So we have our first question by Stephen Williamson. He says, I'm one of those who thinks they should just let those guys keep the CCUs that they obtained through CIG's mistake. I say that as a guy who owns a Cutlass Black, I hope it does in fact have a sink and a toilet, and who did not obtain any fancy CCUs and only looked at the Eclipse purchase page out of curiosity. Yeah, I can understand that point of view. Uh, I think, you know, it's kind of like the, the, the same thing with Lightning and I. We got the LTI, I got the Gladiator, he got the Retaliator. See, now we mentioned Retaliator. We have to do that in every video, it's a requirement. Apparently uh, so. So, um, basically, uh, in that, in that regard, you know, they didn't, they didn't take back our purchases on that. Um, but our but, purchases were just like, oops, we had LTI in there by mistake. Yeah. Um, we'll, and, we'll just kind of give it to you guys. These ones are... Can be gray marketed, that's the problem. Yeah, also the fact that it's, it's a very limited ship sale. They, like, the, as far as, like, the, um, Idris M, yeah. they've only sold it once ever. Yeah, I mean, the M is, if it was a P, maybe, but the M, the M is a whole different animal. I mean, that's the one with the rail gun on it. So, uh, that's, that's, that was something that I don't, I don't even know if they're ever going to, they're ever going to sell that again, officially. Uh, so it was kind of one of those things that it was supposed to be extremely limited ship and I don't know. I, Not I just, to mention that these are capital ships that they yeah. were snagging, which you don't want to go into the game and have like. Uh, well, <clears throat> this is something we're going to talk about later in the show. But you don't want to start off in a way where you basically can't fly the your own ships. Like, there's a bunch of people that have capital ships, and they got them at a special time, but they have lots of other ships. So a, a, a sale coming out that's relatively new, and, and that may, maybe someone's new, and all they have is like, oh, I'm going to jump into the game now, and I'm going to get this uh, Eclipse, and then they go, oh, there's a random CCU upgrade. And granted, this is a very extreme case, and it's not likely the, the, at all what happened. And then they upgrade, and they only have a capital ship. But uh, not to mention the fact that it's a capital ship, and they're trying to keep the sales of these limited. So I 100% support them having those the capital ship CCUs taken away. Um, because, yeah, I know it was CIG's mistake, but when they're trying to influence uh, the economy pre-launch by having these limited ship sales, which I understand. Maybe I don't agree with 100%, but I understand why they're doing it. Yeah, I mean, we just gotta be a little understanding on their point of view on it as well. Uh, I think the biggest issue of it was the fact that it wasn't Idris M was part of the deal. And I don't think they... I, 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 of course, there were there were other ships as well, from what I understand, but I think... I heard the Javelin was part of one of the upgrade options as well. Yeah, and the thing is, is that if if they had to, if they had to do it for one ship, they would have had to do it for all. I couldn't. They would it would have to basically apply to everything to be fair. They couldn't say, ah, oh, well, I guess you can keep the Javelin, but we're taking back the Idris M. So in this case, they, they kind of would have to do everything anyway. Because as I said, I think I think that was that was a, a was a good chunk of the decision as well was Idris M. And you know, those things would end up on the gray market like in droves. People would have snatched those up by the hundreds and. You know, we've already got enough problems with the gray market, and and there's some people out there think, oh, the gray market doesn't do that much damage. But in my opinion, in some regards, I mean, it is a little bit CIG's fault for having some ships being more limited than others. But at the same time, you know, the that money they're not doing any steps to prevent it. Yeah, well, at the same time, that 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 money from the gray market could be used towards the development of the game, and there's a lot of money that 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 escapes the hands of the development of the game through the gray market. So I'm not really for that one reason alone. I'm I'm, I'm pretty anti gray market and anything that that goes along with it. Um, but you know that's just how I feel about it. There's, it's it's kind of like like uh, you know those those amiibos that you get for Nintendo. Like they, they make a certain amount of them, and some guy will snatch every single one of them and like put them up on Amazon for like a hundred or 
two hundred dollars an amiibo or something. That's kind of like what the gray market feels like to me. It feels like sca glorified scalpers. I mean, Which honestly, is illegal. Yeah, and it's, it's so you know. I think anything that hurts the gray market is a good thing. And I said, I, I just, I've worked with someone in my real life who was a salesman um, <laughs> during the day, and at night he would actually go and scalp tickets because he enjoyed ripping people off. And um, he had, um, I said, boy, you. You really like burying their face down in the pillow, don't you? And he goes, no, no, no. I take that pillow away. I want to hear them scream. And it, this guy was, you know, so I'm just saying is that, you know, there's there's some people out there who absolutely just love uh, getting a one up on other people. All right. So we have another question from Justin Doig. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. D-O-I-G. Um, all the redesigned videos I've seen on the Cutlass Black shows two bunk beds now, four beds total. This should put it on par with the Freelancer unless they have changed something that I didn't see. You know, early on, I would say I kind of remember seeing the similar thing. I think there was a, a design redesign after that, maybe to make something fit. Uh, but according to that, that dev post right now, there is only two beds in the Cutlass Black and the Cutlass Blue. And if the if the cutlass has uh, if the cutlass blue the one that the model that I have right now that, that that's in my hangar has a bunch of those little prisoner bays and there's like a little bed and a little toilet each one of those so if the cutlass blue if it's geared to transport prisoners it's possible that you know you could just go use one <laughs> use one of the jail cells uh, if 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 it's still wired that way. Um, I don't know. I wasn't Stop too hot. criminal scum. You've broken the law. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how the blue comes out because I wasn't really fond of those those jail cells in there. They're really too small, and uh, I would I would hope that they just don't come with it and something you could add aftermarket because I don't know. The blue to me was more about the equipment than the jail cells, and they can just they can just keep those. But yeah, we'll have to see how that comes out. I think I think with a redesign, I think the final version isn't. Uh, doesn't have four beds. I think it just has two, like they said. I'm gonna to have to go off of what what the devs acknowledge exists on the ship as, as the most recent. We'll what see what happened? happens. See. I'm hopeful though. I just tried to pet it. Damn, don't bit me. Punk Hunter 25 oh, says, "What careers are you guys most interested in doing in the verse? And did you guys form an organization yet?" Well, I haven't officially formed an organization or anything like that. I, I was part of one. Uh, that I've kind of branched away from uh, to a degree. I put Lightning in charge of it because I still want to associate with them because they're longtime friends, and that's Nova Corps. And I am currently actually working with a group called the Elysian Alliance, and they're a good group of guys, actually. I've talked to them quite a bit on uh, on Discord or on chat, not so much on voice, uh, but more on, on, on text chat. And they seem like a really solid group of guys. I really, they're very helpful. They give good feedback, especially when I'm doing modifications to how I, I how I do these videos and things. So, I appreciate it. I appreciate the I appreciate the effort they put into things. They, they have a group events and organ and they're just just a good group of guys all around. Uh, more mature organization, full of older gentlemen, and uh, I really I really really just like the environment. Of course, Lightning. Of course, I put them in charge of uh, the one that I used to be running because uh, I couldn't imagine anyone doing a better job or being more responsible with it. Because, uh, well, Lightning is just trustworthy. So if there's someone I want to put in charge of, of something that I was moving forward, it, I'd rather it be him. Which and is that, funny because I've said it multiple times and I'm about ready to just uh, disband it. Well, <laughs> that's you know, that you always give power to somebody who doesn't doesn't really want it. You know. And that's that's why I say I can trust you with it because it's like you know you're not you're not someone who's gonna go I have the power all you now bow down by the power me. of grace girl. yeah so I mean that's the best kind of leader the one that doesn't want to be the leader <laughs> I guess in my opinion so yeah so that those are the two organizations there and uh, I want I didn't want to I didn't want to disband all ties with the, the people I've been playing with for a long time in fact I wanted to create hopefully down the road an alliance between these two organizations to work together. And we'll see what happens with that. But as far as career goes, out in the in the in the verse, officially, I I see myself more as a um, a salvager, and to me, that's kind of fun. I like the idea of going out there finding that you know it's kind of like the the um, non pirate version of searching for buried treasure. 
And it's why the Reclaimer, uh, which is a ship I have, uh, is just one of those things I'm really looking forward to. Uh, mining to a small degree, but mostly industrial. And, and I have as many ships as I have because outside of the role of being a uh, salvager, I want to take the role of being a helper. And that means anyone needs help with X, Y, and Z. If they want to do this and they don't have the ship to do it and I do, then we snag my ship. The, the idea of, of partially for having as many ships as I do in the different roles is that it opens up opportunities for other people in the organization I'm with or other friends that, outside the organization, whatever, to, if they want to do something that day and they don't have access to it or they uh, want more people involved in doing it, then I can actually go out there and assist with it. And that's where I get my fun. I don't, I, I don't, I don't care about so much as getting the money together to, to get the ships in the verse. Uh, upgrades, of course, that'll, that'll be something that my money will go to. But having as many ships as I have, the money's not an issue. I don't care. It's more about going out there and doing things together, having fun, and helping them achieve the goals that they want to achieve. You know, like Lightning says, he wants to get a javelin. I'll, I'll be more Eventually, happy. Eventually, that'd be awesome, but yeah, it well, really the, depends on the capital ship gameplay, to be honest. That's true. But down the road, if that's what you want, then I will help you get a javelin. I don't we'll, care. We'll salvage one. Yeah, I'll grind it up my reclaimer. Oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but the thing is, is that, uh, so yeah, I, I, that's the kind of thing I like to do. If someone's looking for uh, help making money to get to the next thing or or whatever, you know, uh, that's what I really want to do is kind of be the uh, the helper to anyone who needs it. K-Bomb123 states, I think CIG's attitude towards Derek Smart should be Exhibit A on how to deal with extremely vitriolic detractors to your IP. Chris Roberts pretty much just ignored D uh, Derek Smart up and until the point where Derek Smart went after his family. While CIG often does silly things, their attitude towards detractors has been a master's level example of how to do it right. Yeah, you know, I would agree. Some people allow to rip on uh, Chris for the letter that he wrote, but I mean, he went after his wife, man. That that's he's that would be hard to hold back by any measure. Uh, Sandy is extremely bright, most multiple languages. It's done a great job marketing a game without even really having spent any money to do it. Uh, amazing, you know, and. Uh, Derek Smart's the ultimate troll, so being able to put up with his crap. Now, I remember, if I remember right, Toast said that down the road that um, that they they will pursue action against Derek Smart. At least they they have the intention to, but not during the development of the game. They don't want to take their focus off the game, and I I would agree with that well because there is there is damages uh, financial and other things that Derek Smart would have incurred to the development of the game. But what this is in relation to, this, this comments on the video uh, where we talked about how Wargaming had uh, started to threat uh, copyright strikes on content creators and how that was all based off of first a negative video that came out about a pay to win tank that was in the game or coming out soon in the game. And instead of just letting it go and letting it fade into the background and maybe taking it as a very spirited kind of critique of the vehicle and then maybe looking at how that vehicle could have been adjusted they went ape and they basically severely damaged their their reputation and their community and all of it um and it was absolutely the wrong thing to do now they, they've made several statements since then um you know retractions even after uh the point where uh, where Jingles had basically stepped away. Um, but the damage is done. The die is cast. And I think CIG's attitude towards dealing with detractors for the most part is fine. Now, I will I will take an issue, personally speaking, and this is not, not directly CIG, but there are a few moderators on the forum boards. What I'm just going to like to say it because I can here without getting banned, um, that are complete douchebags. Um, I have been banned eight times at the forums. Um, coming off of one actually today, <laughs> so to speak, um, which was my eighth, because I was uh, last one was I, I basically told the guy that his um, his poll was biased because he had, he had rewarded it in such a way that 
it was like, hey, well, have you say, it's like, well, have, have you stopped beating your wife? Kind of question, you know. And there was just there was no, uh, it was a very badly worded, and so that got me a, a month ban on the forums. So I kind of decided I'm done with the forums because at this point in time, there's like there's like one or two moderators that that honestly. And, and I'm not the only one who's noticed it, by the way. There's several other people that have noticed it. Anyone who's um, against the interactive mode, we so much as is, 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 um, is say hi on the forums, we get threatened with a <laughs> with a ban, pretty much at this point in time. And uh, because I think these one in particular, and I'm not gonna not gonna say his name, but he seems. I would, to but I don't know it. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he seems to have a thing out for anyone who's 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 uh, talking about. Uh, testing other things in interactive mode and and he will go ahead and just start banning people left and right and and um, whatever Speaking you know. of, of that a small little tangent who was the uh -huh. guy that was going to be doing that um, the article all right now that would be crimson target in fact he's doing a uh, he's been putting together this video uh, it's trying to be very neutral reporting the pros and cons and, and different arguments about interactive mode and I did a voiceover for him on a section uh, I think he's also got uh, Board Gamer doing another section, and the biggest pro I am advocate on the leaderboards, which is Malagos. I think is going to be contributing. Um, so it's one of those things that. We'll oh, have to so he did get someone for the pro I am. Yeah, I just heard it today. It was oh boy, to... that's all right. It's Malagos. He's. I don't think I've seen, ever seen a good argument come out of him from it. So <laughs> I'm not worried about so, that. So it'll be entertaining to watch just because it'll be he's on it. Yeah, it'll be, that's exactly, exactly. He's very, uh, it's, it's going to be the same old, same old on there. So, yeah, uh, so we've been playing more uh, Elite Dangerous uh, this week, just to give it a whirl. Uh, trying more of the things like Passengers and things like that. And, multi crew. Uh, multi crew. And uh, Lightning enjoys a multi crew. The payout sucks. But, uh, yeah, I, it, it's really fun. I mean, you, I have a clip, uh, if you, you have it still. Um, downloaded of where uh i record i i recorded like our it was like two uh oh no it wasn't two hours it was like an hour and a half and i recorded about an hour of it and we got into combat twice and uh as far as i can tell the only money that is shared is if you actually destroy a bounty so yeah. like if if, if jarus does a, a trade mission i don't get anything except for if someone attacks us and i get a percent of that, depending yeah. on what my uh, combat rating is, my combat rating is elite. I have done a lot of combat, um, but I believe at elite you only get about thirty-seven percent of the reward. So if we killed someone who had a hundred thousand uh, bounty, I'm going to be getting like thirty-seven thousand, which is kind of a waste of my time, especially in uh, almost two hours of gameplay. Yeah. And that was the thing. See, I, I was picking up a lot of cargo missions. Some missions, you know, went anywhere from three hundred to uh, seven hundred thousand plus per. Uh, and I'm taking them to like I pick up three or four missions going to the same location, you know. And he's on my crew, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I deliver these, and he should get, you know, a part portion of the profit. He got nothing, and I was so disappointed because, you know, as as the pilot of, of the ship, I should be able to dictate at least the split. Like, hey, I'm going to take 60, you get 40, or something like that. And I would have been perfectly happy with that. I would have been happy with, like, a, a 80, 20% of every money, a, a, all of the money you make yeah. during our, our multi-crew. Because you made, like, 20 million. I made, yeah, and, I made 20 million that day. Yeah, he, he made 20 million in that hour and a half or two hours of gameplay, and I made 57,000. Yeah. So, and that was another thing, too, is that we're, is this this gateway issue to a degree. So, you, I, I, I kind of grown the game came out. I ground out hard for the ships that I wanted. Uh, well, the big one I pushed for first was the Asp Explorer because it's it was able to do combat, able to do cargo, had great jump drive. And, and I, worked... I played the game a lot more casually. Um, yeah, we we did a lot of combat and stuff together. But eventually, it's like okay, well, I need a break. And then I'd go and play something else because, like, my wrist would get tired or I had to stand up because I'd been sitting too long. And you're like, okay, bye. And you just kept playing. <laughs> and, you know, you did more missions. You did more combat. I can't imagine. I always think your wrist would have massive amounts of fortitude. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> the left hand, not the right hand. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can throttle all day, but woo, when it comes to aiming... <laughs> You you were the one that did that. You brought yeah, it there. I did. Uh, I... <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I mean, you kept playing, and so you kept getting more reputation and more um, credits and stuff, and more rank. And um, 
because you stuck with it, uh, you're being rewarded. Where if you're a new person coming in, it's it's a slog. It's a massive slog, and it's it's actually not as bad for me because I've played a lot. But if you're a brand new person to the game and you don't like grinding, like I don't like grinding. I hate it. I think it's awful. Uh, I I would prefer to be like, oh well, you have to pay more money up front before we give you the high reward. That's fine, you know. And then you have to kind of have a little bit of capital first. Just like, okay, now I have X amount of dollars. I can take this million dollar mission, uh, even though I'm paying a lot up front. And it, there's a lot more like risk reward aspect to it. But at least not like that. It's all about your standing and your rank. And rank advances very, very slowly. Yeah. And so it's one of those things, you know, I said we went back. We spent, we spent quite a few hours this week just to go back over it again because, you know, we had a lot of comments about it and how we were seeing X, Y, and Z. But, you know, I think a lot of the ways I feel about things still stands and uh you know I, I do enjoy i mean i do enjoy playing it i was playing it again at least an hour and a half again today yeah I was so playing it today as well unfortunately the place i'm at which was 585 light years, from our light central years system. away yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super far away because someone's like oh yeah there's a bunch of missions out here just you know do passenger missions. you got out there and there's nothing <laughs> and it's nothing but pirate lawless there's there's nothing out there if i want to go back to civilization it's like 18 jumps and you're like oh 18 jumps not that bad except for that's 400 and something light years it's just because i've spent so much money on my ship that my jump drive is insane and i can even attempt to get out there because i actually got lost in space you know cue the theme uh, because my jump drive, it was just kind of a basic jump drive. I didn't have enough money, and they didn't sell one. So I got like halfway out to there, maybe more than that, and I, I basically stuck because I couldn't jump between the farther systems. So I had to take another like 20 jumps to go back to civilization. When thankfully they had uh, like an A-class jump drive, which I could get. Um, and then I, I got out there, like, okay, finally I got out here. And then it's like, oh, here's. 20,000 light years to transport this guy, 80,000 light years to transport this guy. It's like, what? These are nothing like what I was told. Um, and I mean, you, you've actually had more luck with the passenger stuff. I mean, I have, but I have a Python and I have, and I have multiple, I have different types of uh, passengers that I can switch reputation. out. Yeah, I mean, I have all different kind of modules I can swap out on a whim and, and try different things. So, yeah, a reputation, of course, yeah, I get a lot more options. But it's one of those things that, it, it, you know, once you get to a certain point, the money rolls in, yes. But before that certain point, it is a slog. So, but, you know, it's a, it's a matter of it's a matter of perspective. You know, for me, I can deal with a grind. Lightning knows that more than anybody that I can basically power grind my way through anything. I've got too many games that are yeah. better that I can play. <laughs> yeah, sorry. it's like it's like it's his, yeah. Lightning's perspective is like a game needs to be consistently like good all the way throughout, and not just like all, like really good at the end and like terrible at the beginning, better in the middle, and like yeah, fantastic at the end. I don't hate Elite. I, I no. think Elite's a good game, but the thing is, it's dependent on what money you have, what ships you have. Yeah. Like if I had, let's say, I had a hundred million in Elite right now, I probably would be playing it right now. I mean, even as we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I enjoy playing the game, but I hate being limited yeah. um, in, in, and in arbitrary that, ways. And that's why I play and I have as many ships as I did in Star Citizen, because I hate being limited. So Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, that's... Mm. Well, w one, one last thing, because yeah. uh, I, I don't have the post anymore, but there was a, a thread on Reddit, and they were talking about because the, the multi-crew rewards and stuff. And the devs actually came out and were saying, well, we lowered the rewards because we didn't want someone to just jump into someone else's ship and then you know make a bunch of money and then you know get into an anaconda you know and they didn't earn that anaconda it's like excuse me yeah <laughs> well you know your your note made me think of one last thing that i want to say oh boy we, here it comes uh, well there's a game out there called uh, everspace it's kind of a uh, roguelite space kind of game where you, you know you keep going as far as you can until you know. Oh yes. Uh, but they, they, it, it's been mostly a, a mouse and keyboard game, and so the developer came out with this interesting note, and it's the last paragraph in particular I want you to pay attention to on this. And uh, talk about being extremely self-aware, and I hope CIG hits this level of awareness. He says joystick HOTUS support in version 1.0 to be added post-release. Before buying, please be aware that the game currently does not support joysticks. We will start working on joystick support right after release. Also note that only the only X input controllers are fully supported, Xbox One controllers and the likes. 
when playing in VR, you have to rely on a controller. Okay. So let's we'll skip down a little bit because he talks about how Unreal Engine 4 does not support native joysticks and whatnot. He says, Everspace was specifically designed for mouse and keyboard. It is a recommended way to play the game as it is not a simulation but an arcade space shooter. Like in first person shooters, you're going to be strafing a lot and will greatly benefit from preci precision aiming <laughs> when using a mouse. Edit emphasis. <laughs> Sorry, I can ignore the edit emphasis thing. <laughs> it's just kind of there. But no, so look at that. Here's a, here's a, here's a space shooter developer saying what makes it a space shooter. It, it, he, he lays it out. It's about strafing and precision aiming when, when quote-unquote flying. That's what makes a shooter. Okay, that's what we've been saying now. Is that the problem with interactive mode now for, for three years. It kicks the whole flight model about strafing and precision aiming. Which makes it a best damn space shooter ever. Womp, so, womp, womp. so, and you can't mix shooter with complex systems. So, as I said, changes will have to come. Because here's a developer who just comes out and admits it. This is a shooter, guys. This ain't this ain't no sim. Because it because it's it plays like an FPS in space. Basically, what he's saying. So yeah, there we go. There's another one basically saying the same thing and not not uh, not trying to hide it. So, anyway, I thought that was an interesting read. Except for the edit emphasis part was was <laughs> not necessary. So anyway, guys, that's it for um, the show this week. It's out a day later than normal, but uh, I wanted to see if anything else percolated, and some things did percolate. And we will catch you next time on the Blastcast. This isn't the Blastcast. Oh, you mean? Oh, never mind. <laughs> that's that's twice, dude. These outros. I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> that's twice. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>